Friday, 30th of August. There I am, just about to get ready for bed after a long week, our kiddo's first week back in school and all the fun and excitement that brings, when glutton for punishment that I am, I open Twitter for a quick scan before sleep. I should have just went to bed, but no, I just had to open Twitter, didn't I? And there it was, an article from the Irish Independent, recapping an interview with Antishuk Simon Harris at the Kennedy Summer School in Wexford, with the headline that read, My job is to be a disruptor. Oh, for sake. Sweet, merciful Jesus, have you ever heard such absolute bollocks in all your life? I really should have just bookmarked the tweet and put the phone down at this point, but no, I just kept on reading, and it just kept on getting worse. But let's start with that headline. My job is to be a disruptor. That's what he said when setting out his vision for Ireland ahead of the upcoming general election. No, Simon, your job is to lead the f- country. Your job is to be a leader. Your job is to get your government working for the common good and will of the people. That's your job. But we all know he's failing at that, don't we? Look at the absolute state of this country right now. We have a housing market that only works for the rich and the investors. We have record-breaking homeless figures every single month of this year. We have a shambles of a health service that, in particular, fails children at every single opportunity. We have an education education system with f**k all teachers and kids with no schools to go to. We have ever increasing energy bills, grocery bills, insurance bills, you name it, it's getting more expensive. And this is the absolute shite he comes out with. My job is to be a disruptor. Oh, you and your party and your coalition partners have certainly done that job well, haven't you? 13 years and counting of Fine Gael disrupting the very fabric of our social contract so that the rich get richer, following on from their current coalition partners Fianna Fáil, disrupting the whole f***ing country and forcing us into a bailout. And let's be honest here, they've done far more than just disrupt the social contract, haven't they? They've torn it up, set it on fire and pissed all over it for good measure. All hard work gets you in this country nowadays is the reward of paying off someone else's f***ing mortgage. Un- believable nonsense from the soundbite machine himself. But it didn't stop there. No, soundbite Simon went on to say how he does not accept an approach of passing the parcel. Is this you, Simon? The HSE were very clear that they wanted to deliver a four-month target. That's what he said about the spinal surgery scandal in April of this year, as Taoiseach. You know, after being called out time and time and time again for his broken promise to children. Now, I don't know about you, but that very much sounds like passing the f***ing parcel, despite his claims to the contrary, that he was actually taking ownership of it. You know, just because you say something doesn't make it true. You made that promise, Simon. You made that promise to desperate children and their families. The HSE did not make that promise, nor did the HSE make you make that promise. Oh, and he also went on to use the handy excuse of the pandemic for the wait times going back up. Gotta keep on passing that parcel. And let's not forget when he tried to blame doctors for the trolley crisis. And what about the National Children's Hospital? Will he take ownership of that debacle? Well, he certainly didn't when he was Minister for Health, did he? No, he claimed not to even know anything was wrong, despite clear evidence to the contrary. He does not accept passing the parcel in his government. Yet that's exactly what Antoine Simi Hall Martin did in June this year, when he solely blamed BAM, the building firm responsible for the Children's Hospital, for not resourcing the project sufficiently. Did Simon tell Michal off for that? I mean, he is the leader of the doll after all. Martin falls under his leadership in spite of being the leader of a different party. Or is this just another soundbite to add to the ever-growing pile? And what about ignoring a problem completely? Where does that fall under this passing the parcel nonsense? Because this past week, Fine Gael, led enthusiastically by Simon Harris, have been attacking Sinn Féin's new housing plan non-stop since it was announced on Monday. All while convenient conveniently ignoring the whole issue of rampant homelessness and the increase in grown adults forced to live at home for far longer than they should, and the incredibly destructive nature of the housing crisis on society. Is that passing the parcel? Or is it just good old-fashioned gaslighting? But on we go, next up is immigration. He started off with the disingenuous and altogether expected comparison of the history of Irish emigration with the current immigration we are seeing into Ireland. There are so many people who left our 
our shores for the hope of a better future for them and their children, he said. Firstly, plenty of people are still being forced to leave because you and your party have given them no reason to be able to stay here. And secondly, we all know that this is comparing apples and oranges. You cannot compare the large numbers of asylum seekers and international protection applicants, all of whom the state are attempting to provide accommodation and welfare for, to Irish people emigrating. It's not the exact same thing as Simon Harris would like us to believe. He went on to waffle about how having a conversation and debate about migration is valid and important, while giving no indication as to how a conversation like that can even happen when people's concerns are roundly ignored regardless of how tactfully the opinion is put to them. I mean, how can a conversation ever happen when he starts off with the disingenuous nonsense I've just highlighted? That already starts any conversation off in bad faith, a bad faith position by those who hold power. He also said something that betrays what we are constantly being told about just how big of a threat the far right in Ireland is. He said that the groups he admires in communities are the ones who have concerns and questions regarding immigration, but who, when they saw the far right try to get within an inch of it, they ran them. Seems like it's pretty easy to get rid of the far right so, doesn't it? So no need for all that worry about them then, is there? I mean, if they can be ran so easily. I just can't get past the absolute waffle from Harris. That's all it's ever been with him in my view. He is clearly well spoken, or at least he thinks he is, but unfortunately once you pull back the curtain and realise that everything he says is just vacuous empty sound bites, then to me at least all you hear is the con man with no substance. He can speak as forcefully and as passionately as he can muster, but it's all for show in my view and it just rings increasingly hollow. It's all just sound bites and quotes and electioneering that play well to the media. My job is to be a disruptor is a prime example. I mean, what the f*** is it even supposed to mean? I'll hazard a guess he wants to differentiate himself from those failures who came before and left the country worse off. But when empty words are all he can offer, what's the point? He was Minister for Health and oversaw scandal after scandal, with no resolutions or accountability. And now as Taoiseach, he's following the same pattern. All talk and no action. He tries so hard to appear like he's full of piss and vinegar, when it's clear to anyone with an ounce of critical thinking that all he's actually full of is piss and hot air. He's a man who launched an autism awareness charity as a teenager after seeing the lack of support available for his brother. And yet, when he finally gets into a position of power to actually help similar children and their families who are in need of autism and other services and supports, like the assessment of need and other therapies, what does he do? absolutely nothing. He was Minister for Health. Nothing was stopping him actually investing in these services. But autistic children and other children with additional needs and disabilities are abandoned with criminal waitlists and no schools to go to. Oh, but now he's taking action. Now he has launched a new autism strategy that will apparently be delivered within 18 months, only after being shamed into it by teenage autism campaigner Cara Darmody. That's what it takes in this country for anything to be done, the government has to be shamed into it. And even then, it's only a promise. And we all know what a promise from Simon Harris means. In short, I'll believe this new autism strategy when I actually see it. Until Simon Harris moves from talk to actual, tangible action, then I will only ever think of him as a soundbite machine who loves the sound of his own voice and who is constantly in election mode with empty promise after empty promise, and a man who is very much enjoying cosplaying as Taoiseach. I find myself needing to be increasingly careful every time I listen to him speak that my eyes don't suffer whiplash from all the instant and uncontrollable eye rolling. My job is to be a disruptor. I really should have just went to bed. So what do you think? Have I gotten it wrong? Is a disruptor from Fine Gael exactly what we need? Do you believe him when he says he wants to stop the past the parcel approach in government? Or is it all just sound bites and electioneering? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of new content. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or a super thanks, which is greatly appreciated and a huge thank you to those of you that already have. You can also follow me on Twitter. Until next time, Slonga Fold.